So we're going to use titanium white here, Liquitex Professional Acrylic Ink. I have also used FW De La Rowney for the same effect. So, get over here, my, my little palette. I've used wet palettes, I've used dry palettes. <clears throat> this hasn't been opened in a while, so it's a little messy. So we add a little bit of ink there. My super dirty water. And then get a little bit of ink on the brush. Pull off the pull off the recesses. And then we do what we can. And then we just smudge off. The results. Immediately we smudge off the results. There we go. The base paint here is just Vallejo black gray. And because this is a glow effect, I don't care so much. I, I don't care as much about it being super crisp. And a wet Q-tip will also as I've heard in other places, do fine. I just use my thumb because it's there. And I don't have to worry about my thumb accidentally pulling up um, And the th other thing to remember is that it's fine. Okay. It is fine to have a little bit of over... of overspill. Okay. Just gonna get this little line here. If what you're going for and if you're not happy with some of this in the edges here, you can go back in and hit it again. Like these are glowing runes, they're gonna be they're gonna be spilling light and they can all spill light more or less. If you thin your ink, you can <clears throat> with the uh, Water, or more likely, con or contrast medium, or just medium medium. So we'll do the other side, and we'll thin that. I just have to find some of my medium. 
So this is a 50, it's a 80, 20 mix of airbrush thinner from Vallejo to airbrush flow improver. So this is 20%. Bottle is, but the just look up. Oh, there it is. Airbrush thinner, eighty percent. Flow improver, twenty percent. This is just what Vince Vallejo, what's up, Vallejo, Vince Ventr Vince Vinci Venture Ventrilo uses. It's fine. Uh, now, last, so we're going to do, and I use this to just do general thinning of things. Yeah, okay, you can see that. So I put a little bit in the corner there. Add ink to water, add ink to thinner or thinner to ink, it's fine. This will reduce the amount of effect greatly. And you can use a nail pad or what have you. And the purpose of the thinning is just to reduce the amount of. Okay, good. So that will reduce the effect significantly. So what you can do here with the thinned more easily is you can get a clean brush and just pull it around and it probably won't need smudging in fact I just ruined it there I just ruined that extra bit there a bit but that's fine no stress again things glow weirdly they're not all going to be con consistent it's not like I'm trying to do dark lines on models and this is going to thin quite a bit. The wet Q-tip is nice here because it's less likely to pull stuff up more than a paintbrush, which can get into the recesses. As you can see, this water is terrible for this. I need to clean that water out. Okay. So these are these are basically done. This is a much more subdued glow effect. You can also tap your brush around it. Okay. So now show how unprepared I am. On the other side that we did a full up, we're going to get, because this is the color I like to use for this kind of thing, so you can use, uh, that's not what I would use for this, it's Black Templar. So a couple good contrast colors, I use contrast a lot for this, is Warp Lighting for a bright green, or a Killian Green for more bluish. Um, if you are painting and you're an ink fanatic, uh, Tal Sign Green Yellow Shade. Uh, the important thing here is that it's marked as transparent, and with these, you're going to want to use a copious amount of thinner, of, of uh, medium, specifically the contrast medium, or whatever quick paint meaning you use so if you're using like work so I'm using Citadel contrast medium just dumped into a bottle because yeah 
um, the Army Painter, uh, Quick, whatever their system is, be the same. But you want it, you want it thin, and you kind of want this thin too. So we're gonna go with Warp Lightning because I tend to prefer green shades on the guns on these on my rubrics. So. Whoop. Some of this to my paint palette. And then I'm going to get a touch of contrast BDM, put it in a different well. Because I kind of, I'm not using a lot, so I kind of want this to be a 50 50 mix. This is just for control purposes. You could go straight and it would be fine. All right. Now, let's go to the outside, and we just do this super sloppy-like. We're taking advantage of the fact that the white taking advantage here that the white is all the, we're taking advantage of the high contrast between the white and the black. I probably could have thinned that even more. And when this is dry, the green will not show up as much, will not tint the gray, this black gray, nearly as much. So if I go into here, no, because the other side's pretty much dry now, we'll thin this down even more for a more muted effect. So this is like three to one or four to one, but we're just gonna go to town on this and just tint the whole thing. And as that dries, which will take a while, you will see mostly just the lines. And the fainter the glow, the, the more smudgy it can look just because you have different groups. All right, that's it. Thank you.